behind every challenge, there are blessings. And in my case, it's very true. We did a we did a change, we did a we did a and a queen jeans, we did a. As a child and growing up in Rwanda and going through the genocide and experiencing traumas as a child and living in a dysfunctional home, I think my whole life has been quite messy. To be doing ballet, an art form that's quite clean, that's quite set, it's a, it's a, it's a form of escapism. And joining us in studio live now is filmmaker Cynthia Butare and dancer or artist, I should say, in, in the complete sense, uh, Ishimwa. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. So tell me, you know, first I want to know, because I, I see so many Rwandan dancers all the time, and, and actually Rwandans have a beautiful traditional dance, very, you know, unique and everything like that, and everyone tends to really embrace that. You don't often see a lot of Rwandans taking on different dance uh, genres. So how did you get into ballet? Well, um, I started off by doing athletics, and then when I got injured, uh, my teacher recommended that I take up some dance classes as a way of, injury, um, a way of recovery. And so I started doing jazz dance to begin with, and um, in the curriculum, they also had ballet classes, and then my ballet teacher said, you know what, you're quite good at this. You're natural. Why you, yeah, why don't you take it a bit more serious and try and pursue it? So I auditioned for a ballet school in London, got in to my surprise, because um, in the audition I didn't look like the rest of them. I, was just, I just had shorts on and no, no ballet shoes, no nothing. And I just looked, like I looked like I didn't fit in. Um, stuck out like a sore thumb, basically. And then um, got into the school three years later, graduated with a degree in ballet, ballet, ballet dance. So what did, I mean, what did your friends, what did the people who know you most say when you said, guys, you know what, forget about athletics, I'm moving on to ballet, this is my thing now. <laughs> um, they were surprised, they were surprised because, you know, I don't, I don't come from a background where we're very exposed to that world of ballet, and usually the people that end up in ballet are exposed to it, or they have parents that are interested in that particular art form, um, whereas me, that wasn't the case, so it was very foreign to them the idea of somebody who they know going and doing something like ballet, which is very, it's quite a white, white art, art form. It's not many, not many it's not people very African. Like, like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, it's not very African. But to be honest, it is very similar to Rwandan traditional dance in the sense that it's very graceful and it's all about making beautiful shapes. Um, so that's the similarity in it. And I guess maybe that's where my link to ballet comes from, the fact that I'm Rwandan and the fact that it uses that idea of uh, gracefulness and making things look effortless is, is the... So I feel like I could ask you a million questions because it's so interesting, but I know that the film is coming out um, this evening. So what, how did you guys get together for this, uh, this documentary? Well, the story is actually very interesting. So um, it started as a uni assignment and actually... Like kicking it with the kinks? Exactly, okay. for my master's degree this time. So uh, I actually met him two months or three months before his assignment, and it was just in the tube in London. In the train, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and <laughs> and the thing is, like, if you've been to London, you, you you should know, like, you don't get to know people in the tube. So yeah, you you kind of just <laughs> from A so to B. So <laughs> I was looking at him. I was just like, he might be London, but then what? back then his hair was blue. So then I was just like, yeah. <laughs> okay. But then he was looking at me as well. And then uh, I decided to, I think both of us, we were just um, going to yeah. a Vauxhall or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then uh, his friend came to me and said something, I don't know, she asked me something about my makeup and I knew like he was trying to get to know me. So I was just like, are you wondering? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I was going to an event and I just asked him like to, to come with me. It was actually a Rwandan event. It was so, a Rwandan event. So. and. Um, and yeah, so we got there and people were just like, oh, how long have you been friends? Like, one hour What ago. are the odds? I know. So that's the story. Yeah. And then he told me he was a, a ballet dancer. And uh, I found that interesting. So when I decided to interview him, I just said that would be interesting for me to get a story about uh, what you do and the classes that you teach. 
But then I had no idea about the background story. So I started filming him, like just giving classes. And then um, where we went on our way to the interview, um, he started saying how um, dancing has been some sort of therapy for him. And, you know, as being random, obviously, I was very touched by that. And, and yeah, that's the story behind this film. So you're actually, you're teaching ballet as well now? No, um, I taught, um, it was, the, the name of the class was Creative Expression. Um, and so the idea of the class was to teach young people particularly um, ways that they can express themselves through movement. So it wasn't ballet technically, but I guess having the discipline of ballet helped me to do those classes because ballet is very disciplined and something that's about creative expression has got the danger of just going into different directions with no core uh, basics. So that's the thing that I got from ballet that helped me do those classes. So do you find that you know a lot of your students are having the kind of um, the experience that you've had in terms of you know this this art form just expressing yourself mm. helping you like therapeutic way yeah it is actually because one of the things about ballet is that everything everything in it is very difficult but you have to make it look very easy so uh, for example like a pirouette where you have to turn multiple times with your leg bent on one side. Um, Sounds so technical. <laughs> so something like that. Um, when you watch like the best ballet dancers in the world, they can do like six or eight, and it looks very easy. But to get to that stage is very difficult. And so some of my students, when we'd be doing, uh, when I started teaching some of the kids that I was working with, they they were very silly and they wouldn't take it very serious. But then after several classes, then they begin to kind of immerse themselves in it, and um, it becomes more like a an experience for them as well as an experience for me because you see the rewards from them, they express themselves more and you know, become more, more mature right. even though they're still young. And because one of the things that I believe is that creativity can make you um, get in touch with yourself and be more mature. Absolutely. So, so is this something that you're hoping for people who watch the film as well? To, oh to yeah, get definitely. Like what I would say is that I definitely relate to what he just said because uh, as I said, it was just a uni assignment. I didn't know what was going to happen with this interview. So um, the thing is, I actually filmed him in November 2013, and it had been so difficult for me to take res responsibility of, t of this story. You Telling know? the story, yeah. Yeah, because like, I, I just moved to Rwanda, but I was not there during the event. So thinking that uh, I'm the one um, you know, bringing the story, I was not comfortable with that, especially that before uh, the things I was doing was much lighter. Mm. So, <laughs> so what happened is just that the idea matured in my head and then I moved to Rwanda and then I was here um, in April and my dad actually was here as well. And it was my first time asking certain questions. And, and that's why I'm saying like, having done this, this work um, has been therapeutic for me as well. And, and yeah, so I hope that tonight uh, it would bring a good discussion. Right. Yeah. What can people expect from this movie? Is it just kind of a look into your life, or what exactly are, are we to expect? Uh. <laughs> I, think, I think one of the things that me and Cynthia worked on in the story was making it as authentic as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just authenticity and seeing, um, yeah, I guess seeing my journey, but told in a way that's very relatable to everyone. Mm -hmm not in a way that's kind of, you know, selfish. It's more, I feel like what, what we're aiming to do is give, um, give to the people that watch the documentary or the film and figure out what they get from it. Yes, and the other thing is just that the first time, the first version that I did for uni, it has been screened in class and, um, and all my classmates, they, they're from different countries. So they know about, they know about Rwanda, but, um, you know, they would see like the typical documentaries that we see. Right. And um, that was nice to see, like they've been really um, focused on what he was saying and be, being touched as well, although they're not randoms. So I think one of the goal was to make it relatable even for people who are not from the country or are not victims. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so for the people watching, how can we get involved? How can we see this movie? Um, well, the premiere is tonight, and okay. uh, I'm planning to have more screenings. Um, I think something that people can do to help and to talk about the film, 
come with friends, uh, so you know, share it on social media. And at the office tonight? At the office, yes. At eight what o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah.